Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to answer a question that I've been getting a lot lately since Sony's announcement of the brand new Alpha 7 and 7R, which is what is going to happen to the NEX lineup of cameras. Well, first and foremost, uh, the idea that they are dying off is simply false. Keep in mind that the brand new A7 and 7R, the entire Alpha lineup for that matter, which will include uh, whatever updates come out to the NEX brand right now are all still built around the E-mount. So whether you own something like the 10 to 18 or the Power Zoom 18 to 200, whatever it may be, since the E-mount of lenses has grown significantly over the course of its maturation, all of those lenses will work with those brand new full frame cameras. Of course, they will work in a cropped uh, mode, which means you will not be able to fully leverage the entire full frame sensor because after all, these are small lenses designed for APS-C size sensors. That's the way that Sony was able to keep the form factor so compact. Uh, that's part of what the brand new Alpha line does in turn give up by being a hybrid camera that's capable of more than just APS-C uh, size sensor capability. With full frame sensors also come full frame glass. And even though the brand new full frame glass designed for the Alpha lineup is based around the E-mount mount itself, those lenses, not all of them, but many of them will be substantially larger than what we're seeing or what we have seen uh, in the E-mount lineup traditionally, simply because these were not designed for full frame capability. Sony, however, has done a great job, at least on the launch lenses that you can take a look at in my other video or just look at online in keeping the form factor still as minimal as possible. And that's really the tremendous challenge, uh, not only here with what Sony did with the NEX lineup, but now in the next step of uh, the evolving product with the brand new Alpha line. So no question about it, uh, the NEX brand isn't dead in terms of physical brand, but when it comes to the marketing, the actual NEX name, that part of the brand is dead. Sony made it clear with their announcement, you're not going to see any more NEX cameras, but I think a lot of people took that to mean that they wouldn't see another camera like the NEX, and that is absolutely incorrect in my opinion. Now, Sony has not come out and said that we're going to see a successor directly to the, the 5T or to the 6 or 7, but clearly these are all very popular cameras. I don't really even, I don't need to tell any of you that. Um, they're pretty much unmatched still to this day, and that's why Sony has allowed something like the NEX7 to stay in the marketplace well over a year. Uh, many of us, even myself included, thought that the rumors of an NEX7 replacement were true. It seems that many now believe the A7-7R, the hybrid, uh, which looks to be the king of the hill of the entire industry right now for feature set in a form factor like that, uh, is really what Sony's been working on. But I still do believe uh, we're going to be seeing updates. In fact, Sony has directly said that you will see successors to uh, the present NEX models. They just simply will now be under the Alpha brand. So don't fear uh, your NEX uh, centric glass, which yes, it's E-mount, which is still the standard, but won't be able to take uh, advantage of full frame capability, you will still have new options down the road. Now, there is no timetable. Sony has not announced dates, again, to replace any of these cameras, but they have made it clear they are not abandoning uh, the actual uh, footprint or uh, demographic that specifically um, the NEX cameras were capturing. So, for those of you out there right now looking at that announcement of the A7 and A7R and saying, oh, I'm, I've got to upgrade, I've got to have it, I'll remind you, you know, question, what are you not able to do right now with your present NEX camera that you absolutely need from that brand new full frame uh, alternative, which of course is very costly when compared to either of these cameras. I mean, the NEX 6 body right now is $650 retail and arguably, in my opinion, one of the best values uh, in the marketplace uh, with that built-in viewfinder, uh, the ergonomics of the NEX6, a mode dial that many, frankly, preferred uh, that was missing from the NEX6, even though the TriNav system was great. Uh, the 5R prices, I mean, who knows? You could pick up used ones for uh, 
under $400, which is just amazing for the photographic uh, capability as well as video capability you're getting out of both of these cameras since they are both based around the same 16 megapixel APS-C sized sensor. So great low light performance, great overall performance from both of these. Of course, no viewfinder here, but again, I just wanted to reiterate, don't fear um, if you're like me and you've invested a considerable, uh, considerable amount of money in the E-mount uh, system. It's not a waste. Uh, whether or not you decide to transition to the full frame alternative, the A7 or 7R, is really up to you. Sony has at least made sure that without an adapter, you'll still be able to use that glass, just not to this, you know, not to a potential beyond uh, what the NEX brand at least presently has to offer when you think about it. Because if you use something like either of these lenses on something, uh, for example, the A7. Uh, the images will be cropped down to 16 megapixels. In other words, you're going to get uh, the same count of megapixels you'd get from either of these cameras, but performance should still be drastically different because you're working with uh, a new processor, new uh, a whole new system, new autofocus. So it's a different beast, even though you're not getting that full advantage of the full frame sensor. Uh, so all in all, uh, the NEX name is maybe dead, but the actual um, footprint in the industry, the market, uh, for those of you who've been enjoying you know, the abandoning of your digital SLR for something that literally uh, through the trip I just was on my last uh, holiday, this was in my pocket. Granted, I was wearing cargo shorts. It wasn't in the cargo pocket. I mean... This camera was in a pocket. I know it seems a little bit large, uh, but amazing that I could fit a camera with this sort of potential with a 10 to 18 millimeter lens. Yes, of course, there's a crop factor because this is not a full frame camera, but still to be able to fit that in my pocket uh, in, and complement my NEX6 with the 18 to 200 and then have an RX1, which of course isn't an NEX model, but just to have these two uh, still traveling lighter than something like an A99. Uh, many people will make the argument for it simply because not everyone requires incredible resolution. And these cameras do offer incredible resolution, but when you step up to full frame, obviously, um, you're at the top of the ladder. Uh, very little to compare it against. And that's why Sony has started introducing the R versions, higher megapixel counts, uh, removing the aliasing filter so that it's all about De, uh, detail and uh, less about processing. So uh, don't worry. Uh, you know, when I first saw the announcement, I had to wonder this is a big shift for Sony, a transition for the entire business, but I really think it's about, um, you know, a simpler business plan, less confusion, uh, confusion for customers. Now we just have the Alpha brand and the Cybershot brand. Whereas before, you know, we had the NEX, which had the VG within as a subcategory, Cybershot, uh, A-mount. So there's definitely a simplification here. Uh, and I think Sony has really condensed their models, uh, but not in a bad way. The feature sets have become stronger. Price points have gone up, but justifiably so because you're getting more for your money. Uh, but with that said, I'm going to remind all of you, uh, don't jump out there thinking that the A7 and 7R are replacements for the 6 or 7 because they aren't. Sony will eventually sometime next year bring something else to market uh, that will fit that same exact place in the market with new features. Uh, don't think we're not going to see something like the 6 uh, with NFC. In fact, that's been Sony's cue lately. They're adding NFC to all of the models that didn't have them, basically. It's a bit of catch-up. Uh, but not catch up because they're innovating uh, with NFC. So uh, no one else is at the same point as Sony, uh, especially with the Play Memories App Store. Another thing that really makes the NEX uh, cameras very relevant because new models like the $1,300 RX10, which of course are part of Cybershot, do have things like uh, the smart remote control, but you're not going to have uh, Play Memories applications. Forget, of course, interchangeable lens capability. So NEX, far from dead, just rebranded, renamed. Uh, don't run out and buy, uh, you know, the full frame A7, A7R unless you really desire full frame capability because uh, the lens selection there, 
is thin at launch. It's going to take a year for it to become abundant, which I'm sure it will. Sony's roadmap is out there and it looks great. Uh, but you will actually be using lenses like this first and foremost and legacy glass, at least at launch, if you do make that upgrade. And you'll probably regret it, not that you won't enjoy the brand new 7 uh, and 7R, but when some models come out that are in the same price range and performance range as what we're looking at here, I think a lot of you will wish you had just waited it out uh, or upgraded from something like the 5N, 5R, to a 5T or even the NEX6. Again, right now, all of these are bargains, in my opinion, for their performance, uh, especially when compared to these brand new models, which are values, but only if you require what they offer. So the NEX6 still best uh, in class, in my opinion, uh, overall performance uh, price point. You get just about everything you could possibly need. You just don't get that full frame capability. And then the reason you may have been wondering why the VG30 is sitting back here, it's because we haven't heard about any kind of successor to this. Yes, we have the full frame VG900, which uh, in many ways gave way to uh, the birth of what now is a Frankenstein, uh, the A7 and A7R, which looks like it pretty much combines the best of the A7, uh, excuse me, the VG900 with the RX1 and the NEX6 uh, or 7. So, um, the video recording capability that was reserved for something like the VG30 or full frame VG900 now is very much alive in the A7 and A7R and even somewhat in the RX10, even though it does not have obviously an APS-C or full size, uh, a, fr a full frame, excuse me, sensor. So, um, you know, this is the NEX family. It no longer will carry this name, but, but do not fear. Uh, the E-mount seems to be now Sony's hallmark. It has become a success. I remember even a year ago, so many complaints about E-mount, the lack of E-mount glass. And now not only do we have a lot of E-mount glass for what will soon be alpha cameras, even though they truly are the uh, descendants of the NEXs we've all been enjoying, uh, but we'll also have full frame glass for when you're ready to take the next step if you really do desire the uh, more professional uh, feature set that the A7 and 7R have to offer. But uh, the NEX brand, again, only dead in name. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.